Hey there, friends. How's it going? That riff is so fun to play, and I want to teach it to you in this here lesson. Uh, I got an email from Tim a few days back asking for some Rolling Stones song. He included Country Honk, and I'm like, I've never heard that song before. And I look it up, and it's basically an acoustic, countrified version of Honky Tonk Women, but it has a cool acoustic, bluesy vibe to it. And that riff is Keith Richards is sort of sprinkling it in throughout. I'm going to show you how to play it. I'll show you a super simple version, an intermediate version, and something a bit more advanced, a little bit closer to what he does. Uh, but it's just so fun to play. You can use this in any bluesy acoustic context in the key of G. So I can't wait to show it to you. Um, I have some notes typed up if you want to get my sort of uh, you know worksheet here with some of the, the, the steps I'm showing you mapped out. I also have a backing track. It's really like a jam play along track with all the chords sort of happening for you. You can follow the changes and it shows you where to play the riff if you want to have something to play over. So that's all available on songnotes.net. But let's move to that overhead camera now and I'll show you how to play this one. All right, let's go. All right, here we are with the overhead camera. This will just help us sort of see the sort of chord context. And it's going to be helpful later on when I show you some uh, G major chord stuff we're going to do. So again, we're going to break this into three steps. And the first step is going to be the simplest way to play this riff, right? It's just going to be the main notes of the riff. No strumming yet. No timing worries yet. I just want to teach you those notes because uh, even if you played this slow, you could have some fun with it, right? So the first thing to notice on the left and on the right, right, those bookends, we have the G major chord. You can use whatever voicing you want for now. In the next step, I'll show you my suggested finger positions. But the main idea is this is a riff that's played while the G major is chugging along, right? Right? We're going to start with that G major, play the riff, and then go back to the G major. So it's kind of G flavor and tones the whole time. We really want that established. Now the notes in the riff are in the middle. They're highlighted in yellow there. There's eight notes total. It's only five different tones, so to speak. But uh, basically, okay, I'm going to teach you how to play this. A uh, couple things I want to call out here. First of all, notice how um, most of the notes that we're going to be fretting are going to be on the third fret whether we use our left ring finger or our left pinky finger, we want to be able to sort of uh, play those third fret notes on the thinnest three strings. They're not all going to come in a row like that, but it's a good little exercise if you do need some sort of dexterity training to get your fingers worked up. Now, as far as the riff, I would break it into two different phrases when you're first learning it. The first phrase would be those first five notes, right? Right? Starting on this uh, third fret note on the thinnest string, play that twice. First fret on the high E string, open high E string, and then end that first phrase with that uh, second string third fret. Practicing that by itself is a great way to sort of get up to speed with this. Whatever finger you use here on the thinnest string, you're going to want to use on the second string as well. Okay, um, the second phrase would be the last four notes. Okay, again, whatever finger is fretting that second string third fret, you're going to let it off and then put it back down on the third string third fret, okay? That might give you a little bit of trouble because you have to jump your pick a little bit more in the second half, right? Maybe targeting that third string might be tough for you. Just take it slow um, and you can put them all together when you have them both worked out. Okay. And I do recommend, again, getting your left hand used to that G major chord. Start with the G major, and then end with the G major. Okay, getting that muscle memory, you know, familiar with your hand early on will help you out because then later on, Your hand will be sort of uh, used to that motion when it comes to switching to those chords. So uh, let's move on to the next step now and talk about how we can beef the riff up a little bit more. So I'm going to talk about this G major voicing I'm going to recommend using. It's a two finger voicing. You might see me do this where I'm sort of not playing that fifth string. I'm just muting it with my left ring finger. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But the main part of this second step is see this tab here. The melody notes are the same. Those highlighted notes. 
But what's added here are all those additional strings that, you know, it's mainly open second, third, and fourth string. Those are all notes coming from the G major chord. And what we can do when we play the riff, right, we can sort of sneak in those strums of those strings, I should say, in addition to the melody note. So it kind of beefs up the riff. It makes it sound bigger, right? Because if you play individual notes, you get this, which is fine, nothing against that. But if we combine that with a bunch of open strings, okay, it just makes it sound a bit more loosey, bluesy, goosey, kind of, I don't know, it, it fills it out a little bit more. Really cool raw acoustic sound here. So how to think about playing this is, let's look at the G major for a second. If we play it with our left ring finger down here on the thickest string, mute the fifth string, right? That frees our middle finger up. And then we have our pinky on the third fret. If you use this voicing, which is what I recommend using, your left pinky is where it needs to be for those first couple notes already. So for those first two strums, you can just kind of do either up or down strums of the thinnest, uh, maybe three or fourth strings, and then you're gonna get that melody note there, right? And then for those first four notes of the riff, notice how I just kept strumming all four strings, all four thinnest strings. Okay, and then when we go to this third fret on the second string, we don't want to strum the thinnest string in that case. That's an important thing. We want this third fret note to be the highest note in pitch we play because it's the melody note. And in general, whatever the highest note in pitch that you play is going to be what your ear really hears really well. So for this case, again, the riff melody, that highlighted melody, we want that to stand out. So we never want to play any strings that are thinner than our melody note, okay? And then the last two are gonna be, right, third fret, third string to open third string. If you want to, you could include the open fourth string. You don't have to, but if you did include any extra strings, those are the strings to include. You don't want to include the thinnest two strings on those last couple strums. So this is going to really mess up the minor vibe we have going on here with this little run, okay? So again, if we played it, That's what we would get here, okay? You could do this with all up strums. Then get back to your G, right? Or you could do all down strums. You're gonna wanna experiment. If you do down strums, you need to make sure that you end your down strum. See how this down strum, see how my string over here, it's catching my pick because I want that second string, third fret, that to be the highest in pitch note I play. So on that down strum, I have to make sure I don't strum the thinnest string, right? Same for those last two strums. Notice how the second string is catching my pick. Okay, so. That's gonna be step two. A little bit trickier here. And if, if, if it's throwing you off seeing all these extra notes that are tabbed in, you can ignore them, but just know if you happen to play any of them, it's gonna be okay, right? Okay, I was maybe getting two strings at a time there. I just wanna make sure you understand your options. Now that we have that, right? And again, put some practice in with that. I don't expect you to learn that overnight, get comfortable with it. Let's move into step three. This is gonna bring in some more of the um, timing of things. And I'm gonna show you some strumming if you do wanna work on your sort of alternating directional strumming, right? Always doing up and down strums. Here, the main idea is I have all the counting mapped out at the bottom below the tab, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. first thing to notice here is the first note of the riff happens on the and count just after the four and just before the one, right? 
I do that with an up strum because generally I'm doing a down strum on all my ones, twos, threes, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But then on the that means on the and counts, I'm gonna be going up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And with that in mind, bass, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, when you're ready, you can do it again. Bass, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, this is tricky to do like this because you kind of have to have your sort of light up strums under your control. You have to be able to target strings, make sure you're getting those melody notes. So this is a bit more of an advanced thing, but I'm showing you how you can play it this way if you want, right? Again, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, Okay, when you're ready, you reset, take your time. One, two, and three, and four, and, and da, da, da. Okay, so that's basically going to be the third step there. It's bringing in, you're always moving between alternating uh, up and down strums, okay? And that you're going to get that first highlighted note is going to be on the and count, right? That's a, it brings in what's called syncopation, where things are happening not on the strong beat, right? They're on the, the sort of eighth note there. Okay. So that's how we're gonna do it with step three there. Um, so now that you have that under control, you have it all. Now I would say, again, practice these step by step. If, if step two or uh, step three is over your sort of pay grade, dial it back, go to the previous step, spend time with it. I've been playing this riff for about four or five days, just walking around the house, grabbing my guitar, noodling on it. It's such a good song. It's been in my head. And even still, I have some uh, polishing up to do, but I wanted to show you um, how you can have some fun with this one. All right. So that's going to be it for this main lesson here. Now I have a few extra things over on my website if you want to keep going with this, right? One is a practice sheet. It has all the tabs for each of these exercises and some diagrams, explanations, sort of helps you out with a visual aid. I recommend getting that. Also on my website, I have a play along video. It has a sort of chord progression where there are certain measures where you can play this riff over it, right? It kind of similarly maps to what you hear Keith Richards doing in that recording, uh, but it just gives you a track to play over. So that's over there. And then I have a short video showing a sort of alternate version of this riff. There's only a couple differences. It's probably closer to what you hear Keith playing on the uh, album version from Let It Bleed of Country Honk, which is a little bit different from his live version. I mean, it's different all the time, right? But that's the cool thing about these riffs is you can kind of use different variations. So I have another variation. It's a really short video, but it explains how to do that one as well if you want to add some diversity to the way you play it, right? But otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, y'all. Check out songnotes.net. That's my website. Um, all my lessons are over there. And thanks to all of you who are supporting me with membership. If you've watched this far, if you like my lessons, uh, please consider becoming a member. It unlocks all my instructional, my non-song PDFs, right? all my extra videos, my courses, my jam tracks, those are all available for you. And then for my song sheets, those are available for separate purchase only, the things with lyrics and everything, but you get a 50% discount uh, for any of my song sheets that you buy when you're a member. So, and it also is the best way to support me and these lessons I make every week. So uh, thanks all for watching this far. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.